Hi, uh, my name is Claude Hemphill. I'm a neurointensivist at the University of California, San Francisco. And I'm here with Dr. Lisa Manning to discuss the results of her study. Uh, could you introduce yourself and tell us the title of your study? Yeah, sure. So my name is Lisa Manning. I'm a clinical research fellow at the University of Leicester in the UK. Um, and I was fortunate enough to work with the Interact2 investigators on this study looking at blood pressure variability um, in Interact2, an important determinant of outcome following acute intracerebral hemorrhage. So what's the primary hypothesis that you were testing? Uh, the primary hypothesis is that we felt that blood pressure variability may be an important prognostic factor following acute intracerebral hemorrhage, mm -hmm. and so that's what we were looking into in this study. So using the data set from the Interact 2 uh, Phase 3 clinical trial, uh, tell me about your methods and how you define blood pressure variability and analyzed and association with outcome. Okay. So in the Interact 2 trial, um, blood pressure was taken every 15 minutes in the first hour and then again at um, 6, 12, 18 and 24 hours throughout the first 24 hours. Uh, at days 2 to 7 it was taken twice daily, so we had 12 measurements over that period. And we effectively looked at variability in two, we did two sets of studies. So study one was looking at variability in the hyperacute period that we termed the first 24 hours, and that was looking at five measurements during those 24 hours. Um, study two was concerned with the acute period, so days two to day seven, and for that we had blood pressure measurements done 12 times throughout that period. Um, we used standard deviation of systolic blood pressure as our key blood pressure variability parameter, but we also looked at maximum blood pressure, minimum blood pressure, and a range of other uh, variability parameters during those two defined time periods. So what was your outcome measure that you tested? Um, so our key primary outcome was death or major disability on the modified ranking score of, uh, of 3 to 6 okay. at 90 days. So we followed participants up for the 90 day period. So what did you find? <laughs> um, well, we think that our results are, are quite exciting. So there was, yeah. a, there was a clear and linear association between standard deviation of systolic blood pressure in the first 24 hours and at days 2 to 7, clear association with death and major disability at 90 days. And furthermore, the greater the variation, or the greater the variability in systolic blood pressure, the greater the risk of a hmm. poor outcome at 90 days. Was there a differential effect between the two treatment arms? Um, so we did look at that. We did analyses for both treatment arms and we found no heterogeneity between the two groups. Um, so for that reason, we felt justified in our approach to, uh, to combine both into a single cohort. Hmm. So I assume that uh, you uh, didn't use some of the initial values because the primary hypothesis of the Interact2 study was that acute blood pressure lowering would make a difference depending on the particular threshold used. So when did you start the, uh, when do we have to worry about blood pressure variability, at what point? Um, well, in, in this particular study we excluded blood pressure measurements that were done in the first hour because mm -hmm. as you say in, in Interact 2 mm -hmm. the whole aim was to reduce blood pressure yeah. to 140 or below within that first hour and we didn't want to miscategorize variability if you like by including those measurements okay. so we started our first measurement was was hour one having excluded the first the first hour data um, but interestingly, our results showed us that variability is important and associated with outcome, not just in the first 24 hours, but also that association persists in days two to day seven in that acute period. So we should be worried about variability soon after someone's had a, an intracerebral hemorrhage, but also we should continue to be vigilant in monitoring, looking for it, and possibly in the future controlling for it throughout the first few days after that event. Uh in this analysis for, for the study you're presenting, uh, was there a, um, uh, uh, an interaction with time specifically? Is, uh, is day two like day seven? Um, so we didn't look specifically at that. We divided it in, into our kind of two okay. study periods, so the first 24 hours and days two to mm -hmm. day seven. Okay. Um, so I, I can't answer that because I don't have the data to hand about individual kind sure. of time periods within that within that two to seven day frame. So is there a take home message, message for clinicians? I guess the take home message is that uh, systolic blood pressure variability is 
a predictor of poor outcome following spontaneous intracerebral hemorrhage and that's independent of mean blood pressure. Um, the greater the variability in systolic blood pressure, yeah. the higher the risk of a poor outcome at 90 days. Um, and furthermore, our analyses show that maximum systolic blood pressure was actually also associated with a poor outcome at 90 days. So one of the messages is that we shouldn't be reassured by a couple of normal blood pressure readings, particularly on a background of large fluctuations uh -huh. in blood pressure, um, and that variability may add some more to our understanding of, of how to manage blood pressure after stroke. Were you able to look at the agents that were used and see whether specific medications or regimens contributed to blood pressure variability? Yeah, that, I mean, that would have been nice to do. Um, yeah. One of the problems with doing that was because, um, because the protocol in Interact 2 was based on locally available agents. Right. And it was in, you know, 144 centers over 22 countries. Mm -hmm. So there were so many different sort of things used, it was, it was difficult to cleanly do those analyses. So although we looked into it, we don't have data on that at the moment. Right. But I guess that would be, it would be very interesting, particularly given the potential differential effects of different antihypertensive agents on, on blood pressure variability. Yeah. And it's that and the results of our study and a few others that, that mean that maybe modulating blood pressure variability in patients post ICH yeah. might be important to look into in the future. That's super, outstanding. Thank you very much, Lisa. Thank you.